There have been hundreds of thousands of people in human history that you could call great men. Men who built empires, men who were considered gods in their time, men who would shape history forever by invading, by conquering, and by ruling either righteously or wickedly. Neil Armstrong did none of those things. Neil Armstrong did do something that none of those men ever would, and that is stand on a celestial body and behold the earth as God does. Of course, almost everyone knows that Neil Armstrong was the first man to stand on the moon, but I guarantee you, you probably don't know that much more about him than that. Neil Armstrong was a very private person, and his life was exceedingly interesting, although a little tragic. You see, when you stand on the surface of the moon and you behold the earth in all of its glory, you would think that would be a very positive experience. Maybe it would make you more grateful. Maybe it would make you less greedy, more loving, and better to be around with your family. After all, you just saw where all of human history took place up until that very moment. However, although that did happen for some of the Apollo astronauts, that is not what happened to Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong. Buzz Aldrin went home and became an alcoholic. His relationship with his wife ended in a divorce. He ended up in a psychiatric ward, and it took him decades to recover from landing on the moon. Neil Armstrong landed a little better, although his relationship with his wife also deteriorated and ended in a divorce, although he did end up teaching engineering at the University of Cincinnati. However, Neil Armstrong became a very bitter and, I guess, cranky person. If you watch his interviews and you read his interviews and you read what other people said about him, people pointed out that he was so angry and frustrated with the space program. After the Apollo missions, not just the government, but the general public seemed to just completely not care about space exploration anymore. The promise of the Apollo missions was that mankind would go from the moon to Mars and from Mars to the rest of the solar system. The technology we invent along the way would help advance humanity in every conceivable field. If you think about it, every field when it comes to computers or medical or even the auto industry has things that they borrowed from the Apollo missions. The Apollo missions pioneered in many ways the modern era and Neil wanted to see this continue, but the space programs kind of just deteriorated and became pathetic afterwards. Although Neil and Buzz probably experienced crazy things on the moon that are classified, my video on that here, putting that aside, it seems that the moon missions completely crushed these two explorers. However, for Neil Armstrong, this did not stop him. You see, he did never really stop being an explorer. I guarantee you many of you don't know that Neil Armstrong actually investigated a crazy crackpot story that takes place in South America. In the 1960s, a Hungarian explorer whose name I cannot pronounce <laughs> investigated a man-made cave high in the Andes Mountains in Ecuador. This cave to the locals was very sacred and according to them was an entrance to a deeper, perhaps even hollow earth. Of course, he went to investigate. He said that the outside and throughout the entire cave system, it was clear that this was not just a natural formation. This was man-made. At the very end of this labyrinth of man-made tunnels was a golden library. This library, or the metallic library, had a bunch of books inside of it, which were also made out of gold. On these gold tablets was a language that could not be deciphered. However, conveniently, he was visited at this moment by telepathic aliens, which told him that these books contain the secrets of humanity's origins and the answers to all of life's questions. Well, isn't that quite a story? And if you heard this by itself, it would probably be just that, a story. This is way too fantastic of a claim. Well, you have to remember that this is the 1960s. This is before Reddit. This was before everyone just doubted everything and took the most nihilistic take possible with every story they heard. People actually had a semblance of trust back then. Now, if your friend goes up to you and says that he found a giant golden cave in his backyard, well, surely you probably won't believe him, at least not at first. But you certainly wouldn't go to the nearest university and get a history or archaeology professor and ask him to dunk on your friend. You would probably just go with your friend to see if what he is saying is true. If someone told me he found a golden cave in their backyard, of course I wouldn't believe him. But I am going to go check it out for myself. 
And that is what this great, rich Scotsman set out to do. Stan Hall assembled the most wonderful team of people from the British military, the Ecuadorian military, British cavers, and yes, Neil Armstrong. He assembled this very expensive team to go investigate Teos Cave, the cave of the Golden Library. In 1976, the team arrived at the cave. And before I tell you what they found, I really feel like you should know something. Uh, in researching for this video, I came across a lot of frustrations. It is obvious to me that all of the search engines are compromised because trying to research this story is essentially impossible. It is clear to me that the story has been incredibly censored. There are only a handful of websites that you can actually go to to even read about the story, and those websites really have nothing in the way of sources. So what I'm about to tell you is the best substantiated story that I could find, although understand there are versions of the story where they find even crazier stuff. Lucky for us though, they did take pictures. As you can see in this first picture, we are seeing the entrance to the cave. Now, there's no arguing. That is absolutely man-made. There is no other way to put it. That simply could not form naturally. And better yet, this was not formed by some cavemen with chisels. This was very clearly a work that involved mathematics, planning, and heavy tools. Now, when I say heavy tools, I don't even know what I mean by that. All I know is that there's no way some dorks with bronze chisels were able to create this entire structure. I'm sorry, that's just simply not possible. Neil Armstrong personally observed that this was clearly evidence of a massive civilization with a lot of man and brain power. Now you have to understand this cave has a lot of winding tunnels. They were not able to explore the entire thing. However, they did come across a mummy, a mummy that was decorated with silver and gold and a bunch of other precious metals. This was very clearly a very important person and this proves human habitation of this cave. This mummy was carbon dated, allegedly, to 1500 BC. That's 4,500 years ago. This means people have been at this cave forever and have so seen it as a spiritual and significant place for probably much longer than that. Unfortunately, though, that is where the story ends. They never did find the Golden Library and there were no telepathic aliens, unfortunately for all of us. Neil Armstrong returned to Ohio and resumed his very private life. It was almost impossible to get Neil to talk about really anything, so of course, there's almost no record of him talking about this expedition to South America after he returned from it. However, as far as I can tell, he certainly did enjoy his time. And how could you not? This is a wonderful story. A Hungarian man stumbles out of a cave with a wonderful story of telepathic aliens in a golden library. Some very well-respected and some very well-funded people return to that same cave, and although they don't find any aliens or a golden library, they do find a mummy of incredible significance, and they find proof of high civilization. That is one of the parts of the story that really doesn't get a lot of airtime. People like talking about the Golden Library. But honestly, these megalithic structures are way more impressive. This is proof that 4,500 years ago, there was a massive civilization in South America, one that understood mathematics, engineering, and had the brain and muscle power to get it all done. What were they doing digging tunnels? You see, there are stories all over the world of people who talk about underground tunnel systems that lead to underground civilizations. But depending on who you talk to, these civilizations are still around today. After all, where exactly are all those underwater UAPs going? It certainly is worth thinking about, in my opinion. But that is a video for another day. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, as always, please like the video and subscribe and leave a comment. If you do those three things, this channel's success are essentially guaranteed. If you would like to support the channel financially, in the description is a link to a little website where you can buy some stickers for your Nalgene water bottle. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a happy holidays. And again, thank you so much for enjoying the content. Please leave a comment. I love messing with you guys. Take it easy and have a wonderful rest of your day. And stay safe out there.